Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to do another Swedish beer review and this one is actually another one of the numerous Swedish gypsy breweries. So we're going to go to Mohawk Brewing Company who are headquartered in a little place called Tebe which is quite close to Stockholm. Apologies if the pronunciation of some of the Swedish words on here isn't right. Still getting used to Swedish of course but this one is called Anything Goes and it's a 3.8% goes beer and it should be really quite nice. This is one of the all the, the year round or core range beers that you'll find from Mohawk Brewing Company. But anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you do want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual websites are in the video description below. So the link to the brewery website, the link to my future reviews that hopefully I can do from Mohawk. This is the very first time I'm trying one of their beers. And there's also the link to the Facebook profile for the channel and also the untapped profile as well. So feel free to connect with me in whatever way you wish. Always interesting to hear from you guys. And to the Swedish viewers, please let me know what other Swedish beers you would like me to review on the channel as well. It would be really cool to hear from you guys. But anyway, Mohawk Brewing, as I told you, um, they, they call themselves a kind of virtual brewery if you like but it's the same idea as being a gypsy brewery basically they use the extra brewing capacity at various other breweries to brew their beers and then they sell them through an independent label if you like but it was founded in 2010 by Stefan Gustafsson and he'd been working commercially in brewing for a few years before starting up himself but he'd been a long time home brewer before that since about 1993 and it said in the article that I read but he started home brewing because he was a poor student and also because the range of beer in Sweden in the early 90s was really, really quite poor apparently, much the same as it was in Denmark before Mikeller started up. But he was later inspired to form the Mohawk Brewery after seeing the success of the Gypsy Brewers from Mikeller in Copenhagen. And now the beers are a regular member of the Sistion Belogit range and they're distributed throughout Sweden by Wicked Wines. And I think Wicked Wine actually also helped quite a bit in establishing the company in the early days. It said that also in the article that I read. I'll maybe try and put the link for that in the description for you below as well. But as I say, if you want to see the range of different beers you can get from these guys, check out the brewery website. I'm not sure exactly what ones are the, the beers right now. It seems to be that the beers change quite a lot. So this might not be a regular uh, a regular beer next year. It says it's a year-round brew, so I'm not sure if that means if it's core or whether it's done for one year, because if you look at the website, it does have an archive of all the different beers and things that they've done. So do check the website out and have a little look at it. But from what I could gather, the core range beers are the Citra, the Inner Thing goes unfiltered lager brown is the new brown black rocket and also the american barley wine beer and they've got a few seasonals on there they've got the blizzard which is an imperial porter snow melter which i think might be the spring seasonal that's an imperial stout and they also had white out which was another imperial stout as well so the beers from mohawk brewing company will change fairly regularly i believe so hopefully i can review some of the other ones for you and if this is a brewery who does quite a few different beers. It's very good for a reviewer like me to review their beers, so hopefully I can pick them up. But anyway, let's get on to the tasting section of this video. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one here. As you can see, it's quite simply done, but it's, it's quite effective actually. It's quite a nice kind of modern style of label. It actually reminds me a little bit of the uh, the Borg Brughus beers that I had from Iceland. It's kind of similar style of label actually to the ones that they use, but really quite nicely presented. All the beers, as far as I can tell, are similar to this, but they have different colours, and some of the special ones do have uh, different labels as well. The, the barley wine one has an American flag on it, which is pretty cool. But it's a plain bottle cap, this one, and it's brewed at the De Prof Brauerei in Lochriste Heifte, which is near Ghent in Belgium, obviously as well. That's where Toul and Mikeller and quite a few other people brew a lot of beers as well. So, should be a very nice one. This comes in at 3.8%. On the back, it says it's a German style sour brewed with sea salt, coriander and cascade hops. But I was surprised about this. A go it says it's a German style sour. I've never actually heard of a ghost beer being brewed in Germany. I might be wrong about that, so do correct me if I am. But I thought the ghost style was a lambic style from Belgium. So should be quite an interesting one. Maybe it is actually a different style of ghost beer based on an old German recipe or something. But we'll soon find out. But it comes in at 3.8% anyway. But, as you can see, a nice smoky opening on this guy as we open it up. 
I can't. I'm trying to remember the other ghost beers that I've reviewed for you. There was the one that I had that was one of the Brewery de Molen and uh, Brufus collaborations. It was called Beautiful and Strange Goes, and that was my first encounter with the style. And I think I reviewed one either from Mikeller or from Toul after that. I can't quite remember though, but it's a really interesting style of beer. This it's a really quite sweet and quite tart one, but you get some nice. Um, kind of salty flavours in there as well. It's, it's a, one of the more unusual styles of beers that I've come across. But as you can see with this one, it's poured a nice kind of bright golden straw colour there. I'll just bring the light over and let you see exactly what colour you're getting out of that one. But you can see it's a nice bright yellowy hazy kind of golden straw colour there. There's a finger of a frothy white head on top of it. It looks very nice indeed. There's some big bubbles just sticking towards the side of the glass on the carbonation but there's quite a few smaller bubbles going up towards the bottom of the head there too but it looks a really nice beer and as you can see if I put my fingers behind it there it isn't really transparent. It is a hazy beer. It does get a bit transparent as you go to the edge of the glass but it is mainly a hazy beer but it looks really quite nice actually and the ghost beers tend to be quite refreshing so let's give this guy a smell and see how we get on mm. see these beers are always quite interesting in the aroma of the ghost beers you get a nice kind of bready malt base on this one you're probably hearing the music from across the street there's a, a little church across the street and they've got their doors open and they're playing a little bit of music but anyway, the ghost style of beer, as I was saying, is a nice kind of bready malt base on it. You get a little bit of a kind of bready and doughy yeasty character, and that's what you would expect with the kind of Belgian style of beer. You always get that big bready and yeasty character. But you can smell a little bit of the saltiness coming out of this beer as well. And you can smell the kind of coriander and slightly wheaty spice. And there's a bit of citrusy fruit. Maybe a bit of, of, um, of grapefruit coming out too. And definitely a bit of grassy hop from this one as well. But yeah, you can. it's a really interesting style of beer, this one. So as always, if you're trying the ghost beer for the first time, just take in the nose a little bit, as you would with any beer. I would always advise you to do that when you're tasting beer. Definitely have a look at the nose before you try it. But yeah, a lot of um, light kind of bready malt in there. A bit of thicker doughy character too. That kind of belgian -y yeast coming out of this one. There's a bit of spicy coriander character and some citrusy fruits. You can smell the saltiness in the beer as well. And uh, yeah, a little bit of grapefruit and definitely some nice grassy hop character too. So without further ado, let's get stuck into this guy. So this is the Anything Goes 3.8% from uh, Brewed at La Christa Hefte in Belgium from Mohawk Brewing Company. Skoll. Quite interesting that it comes in quite sharp but then it smooths out to be nice and bready really quite quickly. Yeah, really, really quite nice uh, and quite refreshing beer this one. Yeah, as I was saying it comes in quite sharp and it's got quite a tart citrusy character to it. There's a good bit of grassy and floral hop character just comes out as the beer progresses into the aftertaste but it comes in very sharp and very citrusy and then it smooths out just to give you a nice big bready blanket across the middle of the tongue. Yeah, it's actually the bread and yeasty character in this one actually comes across as being just a little bit sweet which is quite nice but yeah you get this light white bready yeasty character right across the middle of the palate there. It's got a bit of a thicker and more doughy yeasty character to it and on top of that you've got a bit of the spicy coriander flavours too and the salty character is, is mixed in with that but it comes out as you progress more into the aftertaste. The saltiness in this beer probably helps, uh, helps it smooth out a bit. It's a really interesting characteristic. Yeah. You'll feel with this one, the edge of your tongue gets really wet and then quite tart and quite sour. Not quite at the very front of the tongue, but as you move to the sides, the edges of your tongue become really sharp and quite um, citrusy. And, and just it's, it's really interesting, a very interesting tart character from this beer. Yeah, but a really nice and quite refreshing style. Once you get used to it, I found when I first tried a ghost beer, 
I was kind of like, oh, what is this? But once you get used to the style and, and the, the citrusy and the salty character, it's actually a very nice and very refreshing beer. Mm. But yeah, around the edge of the palate, you're getting some of these uh, of these nice hop characters coming out. It's really smooth. It's a very overall. It's a very smooth and grassy hop character. But just behind the very front of the tongue you're getting just a little tiny bit of grapefruit character. It's not sour, it's just a very mild, very light kind of uh, grapefruit character coming out. It's, it's really quite a nice little touch to the beer actually, but the lemony, it's almost like a kind of sherbet lemony character. It's really quite nice. That's coming out in quite sharply at the start of this. It's really nice kind of uh, little twerk to the beer. Quirk to the beer. I keep saying twerk, but it's a nice quirk to the beer actually. Mm. But overall, Really nice, really nice example of the ghost style. I have to say, I like it how it comes in sharp, and then it just smooths out really quite nicely. Actually, a very interesting interpretation of the style. I have to say, you can really taste the coriander in the aftertaste, just mixing in with that kind of nice big bready dough yeast. So yeah, if you like a, a ghost style of beer, then definitely check this one out. The thing, I'm not sure if that kind of slightly more bready character in this one is meant to be the, the German part of it if you like. As I say I always thought the ghost was a kind of Belgian style of Lambic beer but there might have been German variants of it as well and of course there is a little kind of German enclave in Belgium as well right in the kind of northeast of the country if I remember rightly. But yeah, this is a really, really nice example of the uh, the ghost style of beer. So if you like it, go and check it out. But in terms of the mouthfeel of this one, it is quite light bodied. The carbonation is really quite smooth. As I said, it comes in quite sharp and quite tart when you first take it in, but it becomes very smooth with that nice malty character. There is just a little bit of a sweetness, pardon me, to the kind of bready malty character as well. And um, it, it, the flavours all blend together really quite nicely and it gets a little bit bitter and a little bit dry just in the aftertaste but it's a nice, slightly bitter, slightly smooth um, grassy hop in the aftertaste but as I say the bitterness is really quite sharp as you take this beer in but it smooths out very nicely and it's a very kind of easy drinking and refreshing beer this so if you do happen to come across it I would say check it out but anyway I hope you've enjoyed this beer review it's been really cool to do another one from another Swedish brewery hopefully I can get back to Mohawk Brewing Company sometime and try some of their other beers the brown ale sounded really nice so hopefully I can find that at some point it would be really cool to review that for you but I hope you've enjoyed this beer review as always let me know your own thoughts on it in the comments below if you happen to have tried it before. In the meantime, until my next beer review, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Swedish viewers, please let me know some other beers. But until then, skull just now, and I thank you for watching my beer reviews, and I hope you're enjoying this series of Swedish, Danish, and kind of Norwegian reviews that I'm doing for you. Slanja.